CES 2012 has come and gone in Las Vegas with a number of interesting top-end phones that are sure to roll out across the world, starting with Sony. Note the Ericsson bid has now been dropped because of the buyout, which has launched the Xperia S, a fairly standard but well spec device, sadly coming with only Android 2.3. Android 4 is coming later in the year. There's an impressive 4.3-inch 720p LCD screen with the usual Bravia enhancements, plus a seemingly decent 12-megapixel Exmor camera and a 1.5GHz dual-core processor. Keeping the Xperia S in the 2012 world, there's also NFC, Near Field Communications, plus sharing through DLNA, HDMI and using Bravia Sync for controlling a plugged-in Xperia S with your TV remote control when connected to a compatible Sony TV. Hmm. There's a weird illuminated antenna strip on the phone's front, plus separate icons and touch spots for those icons. Unusual. Also from Sony and along similar lines, but bigger, is the ultra-high-end Xperia Ion with 4.6-inch 720p display, 1.5 gig processor, etc., 16 gig internal disk, the same decent 12 megapixel rear camera, NFC, also starting sadly on gingerbread though, with ICS coming at some point. We have a new Nokia flagship on our hands with this, the Lumia 900, essentially a scaled-up version of the polycarbonate unibody Lumia 800 that I reviewed in Phone Show 156. The main difference is that we now have a much-needed, for Windows Phone 7's UI, 4.3-inch AMOLED display. It's RGB as well, not Pentile, and the integral battery is being given a big bump to 1830 mAh. Great! The missing front video camera from the 800 is also now here, fitting in with Windows Phone Tango's video call support. Huawei has just announced their own flagship, the Ascend P1, but sure to be rebadged elsewhere, mind you. It's an absurdly thin 6.7mm thick. These things will be painful to hold soon, guys. And there's still a dual-core 1.5GHz processor inside, a 4.3-inch quarter HD AMOLED display plus 1GB of RAM, 8MP camera and an 1800mAh battery. Kudos to Huawei for making the effort also to get Android 4.0 in from day one. Well done. Motorola has been very busy with three new interesting handsets, all sadly launching with Android 2.3 only. The Moto Lux is a mid-range by current standards, monoblock smartphone, a 10mm thick and has a 4-inch WVGA display, 8 megapixel cam, 512 megabytes of RAM, a slowish 800 megahertz processor and a lanyard slot that has a lighting effect. Uh, yes, so apparently you can see when you've missed a call, received a text or have an email waiting for you. The Defy Mini, just like the slightly bigger Defy, is dustproof, waterproof and scratchproof. Its small size only fits in a 3.2-inch half VGA display though, plus budget specs for a 3 megapixel camera and only a 600 megahertz processor. All a bit underwhelming really, I think, I, I think I'd rather have the original Defy or Defy Plus on every count. Finally from Motorola, there's the more impressive Droid 4 with the same form factor as usual, but now a 4-inch quarter HD display and LTE data in the States. The side-sliding QWERTY keyboard has been coolly restyled and there's now a dual-core 1.2GHz processor and 16GB of onboard memory. The cam's bumped up to an 8 megapixel unit with typical dual-core 1080p HD video capture. The Droid 4 apparently also includes a water-repellent coating, though how that's supposed to help given all the keys and the side-slide mechanism is anybody's guess. Another year in the phone world. The phone show has now been going for just over six years. I can't believe it. Seems like I was a teenager when I started. I know, I know, I don't look a day over 20. As someone who gets to see just about everything that's been released, I think I'm in a good spot to make a few predictions for the coming year. This then is the story of mobile in 2012 through my mythical crystal ball. Let's start with Android, the success story in mobile of 2011. Free to license, like Symbian, but unlike Symbian, perceived as cool and trendy. The support for high screen resolutions and the super cloud connectivity made Android a runaway hit. Overtaking Symbian as the dominant mobile OS on the planet early in the year, and nothing's going to touch it in 2012. Though I do expect a levelling off of the market share gains, as many markets are now quite saturated in terms of smartphones and as new challenges come on board, not least Windows Phone. There's also the horrible way most manufacturers skin Android with their own ideas of how the home screens and app menu should work. At some point, people will wake up and rebel, surely. It doesn't matter that each of these skins is in its own way a bit better than stock Android in terms of usability. Don't dispute that. HTC Sense, Sony Ericsson Timescape, Moto, whatever they call it this week, LGs. What I can't stand is that each skin is totally different to the next one from the next manufacturer. Contrast this with the way all iPhones or Windows phones or Blackberries or Symbian handsets look roughly the same, themes and wallpapers notwithstanding. 
you mark my words, there will, there will be a backlash at some point against this massive UI fragmentation. And at the very least, it'll mean that Android market share will level off and maybe even dip a bit. Samsung are on a roll. I wouldn't bet against them for 2012. Watch for its Galaxy S3 with Android 4, 4.5 inch screen, NFC, and even faster processor at Mobile World Congress next month. HTC's Android phones remain patchy in terms of hardware quality. I still think someone at their hardware division needs to be fired. The guy who thought up the insane aerials and back cover scheme, for example. Sony may have lost Ericsson as a partner, but I'm not convinced their designs aren't sometimes driven more by eye candy than functionality. The world of Windows Phone is kicking off in style and with truly mind-mangling amounts of promo money put in by the Big M. But it's starting from such a low base and is so late in the day that I can't really see it breaking the 10% smartphone market share mark by the end of the year. Whether that qualifies as success or not will depend on which side of the fence you're on. HTC also makes Windows Phone, of course, with the same erratic quality, but it's, it's Nokia, of course, here's their uh, Lumia 800 that's going to make the biggest waves here. The Lumia 900, as you saw in the news, will hit Europe roughly in the spring, I predict, plus the Lumia 710 is genuinely priced for a budget. I do think Nokia will achieve modest success with the uh, Lumia range. It fully deserves to, but this has to be set against the sheer inertia and the number of Android and iPhones sold. Yes, iPhones. The 4S was top dog in my recent top five, and deservedly so. It's a remarkable piece of engineering and priced to match. But if you can afford one, then it's the phone to get in terms of functionality, ease of use, future proofing and uh, resale value. And it'll sell at similar levels throughout 2012, I predict. Apple will announce the iPhone 5 in June. I think it'll look not dissimilar to this four inch screen's Nexus S, though, of course, with premium build materials, including lots of lovely metal. Will it sell? Don't be silly. Of course it will to the usual premium demographic and I'll, and I'll lay odds. It'll be number one next Christmas too in my top five. Just don't expect me personally to necessarily use one day to day. Rims Blackberries are in trouble in the USA, but seem perennially popular here in Europe. I don't see much changing on the high street here, though I do worry about Rims bottom line worldwide. There's a serious chance the company might run out of money before the end of 2012 and have to make savage cuts. And what of the smartphones I love to love, Symbian? All the existing 2011 handsets are getting the bell update, but it's too little too late for the market as a whole. Symbian handsets with their decent battery life and great telecoms at a budget price and their great cameras, I'm still filming this show on a Symbian device, they'll continue to sell in developing markets through 2012. Nokia's post-February 11th, 2011 estimate of 150 million more sales is looking a little optimistic, but they'll still break the 100 million mark quite easily. But in Western Europe and the USA, tech-savvy consumers now do seem to want larger, higher resolution screens and wider app compatibility. So I don't expect to see too many Symbian phones sold here in the UK, for example. And hey, with the top-end iPhone, Windows Phone and Android handsets now starting to come with the hardware gadgets that Nokia for one is specialised in, maybe there's no need for even me to cling to this once dominant OS. We'll see. Listen to Phone Show Chat, my podcast with Tim Salmon, every week for my continuing thoughts and musings through the year ahead.